Hey, what's cracking, everybody? Welcome to Mirrorless Minutes, episode number 54. Got Mike Baining over here. Uh, he, so, okay, I got, I got to make a comment. Oops, hold on here. Let me uh, pause my YouTube channel here. Um, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I have to comment that, again, again. Mike, is, <laughs> Mike has the best gear you can imagine possible in his room. You know, he's got <laughs> 5K iMac, and, you know, he's got a great uh, – Yeti microphone and um, <laughs> man, and he's got a MacBook Pro. He's got it all. He's got the same stuff. I same stuff. I got the same stuff here. And Mike's broadcasting yeah. from an iPad. Yep. So we're running into this situation where the camera doesn't want to start, and I've run into it too. And I'm assuming other people have as well. For whatever reason, we can't get the dang thing going. So Mike, at least thank God he has an iPad. He's got the iPad <laughs> Pro. He's got like yeah. the greatest gear over there. So if he's gonna yeah. do it with an iPad, he's gonna do it the right way. But, yeah, can you, uh, well, what's what's funny is the the iPad is leaning against you know the three thousand dollar iMac, right? <laughs> the ultimate iPad. Isn't stand. that always a good feeling? <laughs> yeah, it's the ultimate iPad stand, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, we, well, we bitch I, about I, the craziest first world issues, don't we? <laughs> yeah. In fact, I'm I, I'm even going to take a picture of it just because I I need to remember this moment. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> so, <funny. laughs> but uh, but the yeah. crazy thing is is uh, Mike's home. He's like right. actually like in the state of Michigan for an episode of Mirrorless Minutes. It's been a minute for that too. So, which uh, is so a, how's which it going? Is a Mike? Big thing. It's going good yeah. outside of all the uh, technical issues. Um, you know what? I, I can't wait to get out and uh, get to New York for yeah, the Olympus yeah. Summit. Uh, I I can use the vacation from the regular job. Oh, I for bet. sure. Without a doubt. You, what do you? I just I didn't get a chance. Jamie and I usually get out a few minutes early, so we get a chance to banter a little bit. So I'm gonna have to banter online. <laughs> so put the new glasses. Is, are those new? Yeah. So, you know, in my uh, advanced age, uh, you know, I wear reading uh -huh. glasses. Then, um, man, I just wanted to change the pace. I wanted something a little bit different. So, found these cool glasses on Amazon. I actually got two pair for like fifteen bucks. They're reading oh, that's glasses, cool. You, you know, looks like you could put some like neon around there and do a live composite. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the second <laughs> pair of them are clear frame like this, but I plasti dipped them. I don't know if you've ever seen any oh, of that geez. stuff, but it's cool. Yeah. Like, so I sprayed them up and then just uh, peeled it off the lenses, and boom, I got matte black pair. Oh, you just peeled it off pair. the lens? Yeah, it's cool. It's cool <laughs> stuff. I'm going to plasti dip all, awesome. like, all kinds of stuff now. Don't let yeah, us hear that. I, They're going to see plastic dip done. lenses and all kinds of stuff. <laughs> what the hell are you doing? So, uh, so tonight's show. Well, we've I guess got. We should get to the show. Yeah, yeah I think people <laughs> tuned in not to hear about my my plastic dipped glasses uh -oh, and my. I'm uh, froze. Hair. You froze. No, I'm I'm rocking and rolling. You're rolling too. Okay, good. So all right. Hopefully, good. Hopefully, hopefully, you can hear me. So. Yeah. Um. So tonight's episode, we've got people watching live. Um. Let me move my chat window out of the way and make sure there's no questions. No questions yet. Um. What are we here for? What are we doing? What are we going to talk about? Oh, I don't know. A camera. Is there, is there anything going on? Yeah, there's a reason we're going to New York next week. Oh, that's right. Nah, this would be the reason. Oh, it's hung up on my uh, arm here. Um, there we go. The EM1 Mark II. Uh, if you're here watching this, then there's a decent chance you subscribe to me on YouTube. If you don't, I'm going <laughs> to hunt you down and skewer you. Um, so if, if you follow me on YouTube, you've seen that I did a, a little hands-on video just talking about... Uh, you know, my initial impressions of the camera, as far as it related to the uh, continuous autofocus tracking aspect of this yeah. camera, um, just because that was like one of the big, 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 big selling points of this camera is uh, breaking into what I'm going to call that last barrier to professional photography, <laughs> um, which is like the sports realm. Um, we know looking at, uh, I'd say, Tracy McGlosky's work, Laura Hicks's work. Um, we know, uh, I'm going to butcher your name, Steve, but Steve Van Ask. Is that right? Am I yeah. It right? Um, yeah. He's good also enough. close enough. Steve V over in, uh, he's in Indiana, I believe. Yep. Um, you know, another wedding shooter. There are a lot of people that are doing portrait and wedding work, you know, at a professional level with these cameras, but you're not really seeing a whole lot of people on the sidelines with uh, mm -hmm. uh, mirrorless cameras or Olympus mirrorless cameras specifically i don't think that there's, there's any canon mirrorless shooters i can't even say it without cracking up there's no definitely no <laughs> canon mirrorless shooters on the sidelines but um that was just yeah. mean to me to act like that but uh <laughs> but this this camera i've done it um 
I've shot on the sidelines. I've shot several different uh, genres of sport with it and wildlife. And bam, I'm telling you what, it can make a crappy sports shooter like me come out of a game <laughs> with some shots like what? You know, uh, mm -hmm. I was totally floored with it. Um, so like I said, that I just got off on a, on a long-winded rant there. So my initial video was talking about that. Tonight, I guess we can talk a little bit about some other things. Um, Tim Lau mm -hmm. wants to know um, – will they release the price point next week? I don't know <laughs> at all. I really don't. Who I can't knows? say. I wish Who I knew. Knows? You know, I'll tell you what, Tim. There are a lot of things that we get access to <laughs> in advance. Um, crazy enough, like that was not one of the things that we had uh, information on. Release date and price. I None of us in the visionary program, to my knowledge, nope. have no. uh, that information yet. Um Maybe we'll learn it next week. I don't know whether it gets released mm -hmm. next week or not. But um, rest assured, though, as soon as Mike and I find out, we're going to talk. Oh about man, it. yeah, definitely sharing that. You um, know, and, and and I, you know, I mean, I know I've heard it could be a little bit more, but whatever. It's uh, oh no, it's it's, it's going to be worth this it. This camera is going to be different. Yeah, no, it is. <laughs> it I is. Mean, they, you know, and I know you're shooting with it, and I'm just reading <clears throat> about it. <laughs> right, so right. It, you would agree with the game changer quote? Oh my god, unquote. yeah. Yeah. yeah, I definitely would. Um, do they let us play with the new underwater housing? Tim is asking. We could request it. Um, I haven't. Mm -hmm. uh, I live in Michigan, and, buddy, it is cold <laughs> out right now, so I don't know where I'd be swimming in the water. I'd have to be in a swimming pool, which that'd be kind of <laughs> rad to just do, like, an yeah. underwater shoot like Tracy does. Um, but mm, we have access to stuff like that. I have not personally asked for it because I don't really have a uh, a place to use it yet. If I make a trip to somewhere tropical and warm, you know, you know I'll be yeah. asking for one. I uh, I just booked a trip to the Bahamas in January. Now you just gave me an idea to ask. <laughs> so Mike will be uh, snorkeling yeah. and scuba and stuff. That would maybe. be cool to do. Um, yeah, but actually, I just uh, put together. It's, this will be months away from now, but the start of uh, Porsche racing season, the Porsche Club uh, racing season across America. Mm -hmm. I just talked to two guys tonight, uh, so that uh, I definitely want to test out this camera and some high speed racing situations. Oh, yeah. Won't be for a few months, but I guarantee you it'll be on the show. We'll be talking about it because this yeah. camera looks like it's ready for it. And it's funny too, because I'll tell you what, um, I know hands down from firsthand experience that tracking a car mm -hmm. won't be a problem. I don't know. Um, I know I've, I have a friend who used to race in that uh -huh. series. Um, and I've had conversations with him. It's not like Formula One, um, right? You know, it's a lot of road courses and things like yep, that. Yep, all so, road courses. So you're not uh, you're not really going to be hitting like the 200 plus mile an hour speeds. And I no, I haven't had the opportunity to, to try to track anything like that. But I can tell yeah. you, for any kind of road course racing, man, this is going to nail it. Um, motocross, it'll do it. Yeah. So you'll yeah. be you'll you'll like that. Yeah, um, it's going to be exciting. So Constantinos, and I'm not even going to try to pronounce your last name. I apologize. <laughs> I know it is Greek, maybe. Um, wants to com wants me to comment about image quality. Any improvement from the previous EM1? Yes, mm -hmm. definitely, without a doubt. Um, That's good. That was one of my questions actually tonight. Is to talk about that. Yeah. So I personally, um, for I shoot like a lot of landscape stuff. Um, I see an increase in dynamic range. I, I, I. It's one of those things that's hard for me to, uh, to quantitatively put into like a like a number or percentage or something like that but it, i see a difference in my landscape shots so um we can't i'm not allowed to share any images yet i even actually reached out today and asked specifically if i could <laughs> do like an image share today but i can talk about um my impressions and experiences with it i just i'm not allowed to share yet um but i did do some side-by-side -side shooting um Mm -hmm. And I think I'm not just so people know I'm, I'm probably not allowed to share it because I don't know that I'm necessarily on the final firmware. Yeah. So there's, there's that. Um, right. When I did do uh, up North, some shooting, we went up for fall colors here in Michigan and I shot, um, you know, side by side, Ooh, shaking the camera with the EM five Mark two um, mm -hmm. and the, the new EM one Mark two side by side, exact same scene, exact same lens, exact same settings. Um, definitely a difference uh, more detail in the shadow uh, areas cool. in some of the landscape scenes so that's how i'm gauging it they're i'm not like some professional dxo dude or something <laughs> like that so i can't really say you know if that's the scientific way of doing it. i can just say from how i shoot perspective 
Mm-hmm. I see a difference. Um, Did you say too? Didn't you uh, do a night shot or, or something too, uh, which was like a, a, a nice higher ISO? Yeah. So, I mean, uh, yeah. so I sh- I was shooting some sports stuff, um, and I was shooting a friend who uh, was mountain biking. He was nice enough to model for me for it. And uh, riding through the woods, you know, it was. Later in the day, it started to get a little darker. Um, had to keep bumping the ISO up and bumping it up and bumping it up, you know. And I was shooting comfortably at 1600, no problem. I mm-hmm. would not hesitate to just straight out of the camera, just use them. And I had to move into like uh, up to 6400, you know, to, to freeze the motion of him coming yeah. down and doing these uh, uh, banked walls and stuff like that. And uh, we moved to another location on this bike trail where there was like a tabletop jump kind of set up. And, um, and it was dark there. And I thought, okay, I'm, I'm going to have to just do like some creative looks, you know, with some blur. And I thought, you know what? Screw it. Um, I'm just going to max, I'm just going to crank the ISO up to like 20,000. It just, cause that's about <laughs> where I had to be to freeze it. And it froze it. Great. It's 20,000. I mean, I, don't, I it's not going to be perfect obviously, but Holy crap. Was it like really yeah. good 20,000? And I don't know if it was just cause I was metered really well. So it worked out good, but, um, you know, you get a little chunky in there, a little blocky, um, but man, totally usable. I mean, I would, especially if you were going to do one of those things where I'm just going to convert to black and white. To yeah, use I was just going to say, but, you know, make that black and white is probably going to work pretty dang good. Um, did I show you the picture uh, or did I show somebody, one of the other trailblazers in the program? I think I yeah. showed somebody yeah, the, the, the 20,000. ISO. Yeah, I did. It was in the, the group chat. I did. I shared, oh, the, tw- yes, I shared yes. the photo. And I, asked, I, I shared the photo and asked everybody, okay, let's play the guess, guess the, the ISO, ISO game. And nobody went past 6,400 with the ISO. And when I right. said 20,000, it was like jaws drop open. Like, are you freaking yeah. kidding me? And that was just yeah. the JPEG straight out of the camera. That wasn't with me trying to work with it at all in post. So right. ISO right. handling was like, wow. Now, you know, who's going to shoot at 20,000 ISO on a regular basis? Probably very few mm-hmm. people. Very but few. in a pinch, if you needed it to get the shot, you know, I cap my ISO right now, I think at like 10,000, mm-hmm. like on the, um, I think on the pen F. Yeah. And that's the, where I'm um, capping mine right now. On the the pen F, F and I think the EM five mark too. I think I'm capped at pen F. I'll, I'll go a little bit higher on this camera. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's, that's really cool. That's, that's exciting. And then how about, um, is there, is there any new like, uh, art filter things Are they're all the same? Art filter wise, yeah. have you looked into that? Yeah, there's, no, I, there's nothing from like the pen F in there. No, man, you know, and that, no. that and okay. I see what they're doing. They're probably reserving that for that niche, yep. but man, I was really, really, really hoping I know. to get that I know. in this camera because I love <laughs> the, I the profiles. Too. Oh, how cool that would have been. Um, so. so I got a few questions uh, to yeah. add that need to be answered here. So Reba is asking, uh, from the pen F image quality with the EM one Mark two, just a comparison of those two. I have not done those two like side by side with the exact same scene. Um, it's going to be, uh, again, personal perspective, just trying to remember like a couple of similar scenes. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say it's a little bit better than the pen F. I'm not going to say this is like a, a light year, um, jump ahead of it. Um, but I haven't, I, I know I haven't pushed the pen F probably as high in ISO and been comfortable with it. If that means mm-hmm. it. Um, dynamic range. I think there's probably uh, some increase there too, as well. And I don't know if that's the, um, the processors, the way they're the, the engine in this camera, how it's handling it with the JPEGs. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. Too. But there's that, there's, there's a, there's a, there's an increase in, in quality of image. I think personally, I just like mm-hmm. the way it handles the files. And, and I'm one of those people that swears that every one of these cameras handles files a little bit differently than each other. So they all mm-hmm. have their own distinct look. Um, so Tim, well, yeah, Constantino said I pronounced his name correct. Cause I didn't try to pronounce <laughs> your last name, sir. So, um, so Tim <laughs> wants to know if I can please talk about how the 12 to 100 fit in. If I'm a user that already has the 12 to 40 and the 4150 pro. Um, yeah. So I had hands on time with that on this body. Yeah. Um, and where it fits in with the, uh, uh, I guess, I don't know if he wants to know, like, I don't know how to respond to it. It's basically like, I, I'll personally just say that it's the lens, it's the the unexpected champion, uh, you know, of lenses for me. It wasn't something that I honestly felt like I would have an interest in until I started shooting with it and realizing how capable the lens was. I always felt like, you know, if you try to cover 
big range like that. Yes, you know, yeah. it's it's kind of been like saying. common thought that you know you right. can't have an all in one lens that's good. I call BS well, now. It, I, you really I'll tell you what now because I, mean, I can come in at least on that one after shooting with it that yes. day at the zoo. Um, so you, I shot from all the way from nice um, an event. It was an event. I mean, that's an ultimate event lens. I never pulled out the twelve to forty. Never pulled out the forty to one fifty. I never had to. Yeah. And and then on top of it, it was at a zoo, so we walked around a zoo and messed around there, and the clarity that I could pull off off the you know uh, fur of animals, hair off animals. Uh, wow. I I did not think that was going to be the lens that I thought it was going to be. Yeah. I'm going to agree, agree with you 100. percent Yep. Um, I'm probably I'm probably even more excited actually about that because of my travel. Sure. Uh, oh, yeah. That I am just going to pack that lens. <laughs> yeah. I am. I am positive you will see a post or a blog post or something, and and I think I could do. And it might look a little odd in some street photography, but I know I can do travel for sure. Oh yeah, totally I mean, without a doubt. Yeah. You know, and um, you know, it's it, you. You, I think you hit the nail on the head with talking about the detail that you can pull out, like in a shot or whatever. Um, yeah. I guess the way to put it is that it resolves very well. So. Right. Uh, the, the amount of detail you get out of it. And so you can shoot like super close up with it. Right. Um, mm-hmm. And that's kind of, kind of a big deal. And I'm going to share, I'm going to do an image share real quick just to show how you might as well. I don't have any for tonight, so you can take all the time you want. <laughs> yeah. So um, let's see application window. Here we go. Um, so this is, this is something that I would normally chase after with the 60 oh. millimeter macro. Okay. Um, but this was with the 12 to 100 and I'm all the way out at the long end at 100 millimeters, but I'm still really close to these little mushrooms. And these guys were tiny, um, like ridiculously tiny. Uh, I'm going to say that the, the cap on the mushrooms were, um, you know, they were, I was going to, I was going to do this. <laughs> they were like, <laughs> they're like the size of my index finger nail. And I don't have big meaty paws. You know, I've got like a smallish medium hand. So they were really small mushrooms. Um, and I'll be damned if it didn't feel like I was just working with a macro lens. So, you know, it covers a broad focal range and then it's in a pinch, you know, I think it's kind of a kick butt, you know, macro. Substitute. Yeah. yeah. That is uh, really cool. Let me see. So let me close that window. I know the man, there's a lot of questions tonight. This Good. is crazy. Yeah. It's, I kind of like this. Um, so let's see. He wanted to know, I guess, other benefits other than the added one stop of IS. And I think we just kind of hit on that, mm-hmm. um, that it's a great all arounder. You know, I mean, you know, for yeah. you, you travel all the time. I think being able to pack a single lens and maybe then like one prime, like a 17 millimeter. I would that you pack the 17. With, yep. Mm-hmm. You know, and then you're set, you know, you don't even have to worry about anything else. No. Um, Small, tiny bag and you're ready to go. Uh Mikhail wants to know if I've ever tried the 35 to 100. Yeah. Oh my God. Talk mm-hmm. about a lens. So <laughs> in regular four thirds, the 50 millimeter F2 right. and the 35 to 100 were two lenses that I had, you know, enough hands on time with to know that I miss them. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, Tim wants to know about justifying the purchase of it. Um, if he's already got the 12 to 40 and the 40 to 150 or save up for the 300. If you've already got the 12 to 40 and the 40 to 150, I don't know what you shoot, but the 300 millimeters a beast and it's nice to have. So, right. Yeah. Depending on what you shoot, if you've got yeah. some use for that 300, that might be the one to go for. Yeah, but, exactly. You know, and then, but if you're the guy that's going to travel a lot and just want to deal with one lens, right. It's hard, hard to say, you know, it is, you know, it, Again, you know, so I carry a bag every day to work with me, you know, like right now the bag is the Pen F 75, 12 millimeter and eight millimeter fish eye. Cause I'm, I'm, I got this weird thing going. If you watch the show, you know that I'm only shooting primes on the Pen F forever. <laughs> so, um, but if I was just going to do like that, that kit might end up getting replaced with what, whatever body and the 12 to 100 and I'm set, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm wide, I'm longish, yeah. you know, and, and like I said, in a pinch, I can do macro. Yeah. Um, man, let's see another questions here. So somebody's asking, um, if I've ever taken a high res shot and how does it take out motion artifacts? It rocks at that. So oh, when we can, that. yeah, when we can share images, I'll be glad to share some shots that I took. Um, 
that were on a uh it's a really slow moving river it's kind of like an offshoot of a river that's got a cool bridge over it and stuff i shared some shots from that bridge earlier this week um it's a wooden covered bridge from the 1800s here in michigan and while it wasn't like crazy windy there was a breeze so there was movement to the leaves um and you don't get weird artifacting like you would have probably on the yeah. previous version of the high res mode. Uh, I did a really good job with that. I was actually did not expecting to be able to use those shots and it turned out great. So that's, that's yeah, that's a, a good sign too, because like you said, in the beginning of the show, that firmware is probably not the final firmware that you're no, dealing I don't think with it is. right yeah. now. Yeah. It never was. I know with the pen F it wasn't either. Right. Um, when we were doing that pen F testing. So that's exciting because you don't know the cha what change might be in there still to come. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Some new uh, secret sauce from the yeah. uh, developers. <laughs> so tackle this question, Mike. Um, Frank yeah. Kinala wants to know, is the 12 to 100 heavy or large compared to the 40 to 150? Um, I don't, I feel it. I'll tell you what, I to me it feels just a tad heavier than the uh, 12 to 40. Yeah, isn't that awesome? <laughs> um, in fact, it might feel like the 12 to 40 uh, weight-wise. Yeah. There is zero balance issues. You know, the 40 150 still, when you hold it in any camera, still got a little tip to it. You got to hold your camera, and the grip's really nice on the M1, obviously. <laughs> um, for But I didn't feel like I, – I didn't feel like I needed the grip – and then I'll tell you the other thing too. Here's the other thing. Uh, unlike Jamie, I have put other lenses on my Pen F, and uh, <laughs> and I and I deliberately took the grip off the Pen F, just like you see it here, and put on that 12 to 100. I just I wanted to feel what if somebody didn't have a grip, what would that feel like? And you know, if you're holding it properly, you you just don't you don't have that tip. I don't know. Um, I, the weight distribution has got to be right. I mean, it's just, it, it, that's why I think it's such a travel lens. Cause I love taking the pen F traveling. Um, I love what it does with live composite. And, you know, if you know me, that's what I'm going to go for. So oh, yeah. yep. uh, that 12 to 100 is, is going to, it's, it can be a live deposit, you know, a live composite lens that I really couldn't zoom that much before on some of the other things I was doing. So yeah. Um, yeah. I, it, it, so I would say 12 to 40, just a little heavier than that, maybe. That's exactly how yeah. I felt about it. You know, it's yeah. just a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. um, man, the, it's funny. If you threw them both in the bag side by side, yeah. at first glance, you might not know which one was which. Right. You know, unless Especially they were lying the lens, down. Yeah. With the lens cap up, like, you really don't yeah. know. You know? Yeah. Um, Glenn wants to know if the teleconverter works with 12 to 100. No, it does not. No. 40 to 150, 300 millimeter. Yeah, just the two. Uh, custom menu area where you can save your favorite settings. Yes. So yeah. that is going to be – so everybody – not everybody. A lot of people are probably familiar with the My Sets concept where you can assign custom settings to different buttons on your mm -hmm. camera. Um, Olympus, at least on this camera, and I don't know if it will stay this way forever or not, did away with assigning it to like function buttons and all that, but actually gave you dedicated spots on the dial. So you can see up here, I've got a C1, C2, and C3. Those are your, mm -hmm. custom, your custom settings. So you assign it that way. And speaking of that, so this is something that definitely should be mentioned. Um, in the past, whenever there's been a, a big firmware update, you know, usually like a, a big mm -hmm. overhaul on the firmware, or if you send your camera into Olympus for any kind of a service or cleaning, uh, your camera at the end of those processes comes back back to the factory defaults. And if you're someone who likes to customize your camera, which if you've been shooting with Olympus for any period of time, you've probably got some custom settings. It stinks to get your camera reset. <laughs> um, especially if you own more than one camera, then it's really a pain in the ass. You know, if you mm -hmm. do a firmware update and then like everything is all reset, then you got to go back through and remember what everything was set up at. Now you'll be able to back those settings, custom settings up to, um, I think, think if i'm not mistaken it's the olympus updater software okay what it'll do is it creates a file and that file can actually be saved um on a thumb stick or a thumb drive or in dropbox or wherever wow. i didn't even know that really? yeah so it creates it creates a separate awesome. backup file so that file can be taken with you wherever you go and then you use the olympus update i believe it's the updater software is the one that does it will pull that file for you and apply it and you can apply it across camera. So, um, wow. That's now, and I, when we get to New York next week, I'm going to have some 
really tough questions to ask. So I want to mm -hmm. understand what settings are transferable between cameras. Like, is can it you just share just from <laughs> is it just from EM1 Mark II to Mark II, yeah. or is it from EM1 Mark II to Mark One? I'm not sure. So, um, yep. it'll be interesting to find out how that works. And so you can, uh, so you come up with a couple cool settings. You could share those settings. Am I right? Exactly. Yeah. Ooh. Now, they, now we're starting to talk. <laughs> yeah. The, the end goal for me yeah. is to have that ability within the OI share app. Exactly. Because how cool would that be to have it backed up to your phone and then you don't even have to have a computer handy and you can just yeah. fire it over that way. So maybe that's coming. Who knows? This is already a huge step as far as I'm concerned to actually. <laughs> Um, ah, so Tim's got a lot of questions tonight. <laughs> he wants to know, um, how is the subject lock focus tracking? Are there different tracking modes like in the new Fuji X-T2? Well, I'll tell you what, I don't know anything about really any other competitive, uh, any other brands of camera. I don't, I don't research them really, to be honest with you. And I don't yeah. show them. So, um, I really couldn't say, uh, I get, I'll we'll have to wait for some other reviewer to pull that one out. <laughs> yeah so glenn thinks that uh if the settings between cameras are not the same that you wouldn't be able to share them across different bodies um yeah. that's kind of what i'm thinking you know i mean because we don't have the ability to do like a quote unquote my sets and instead you're assigning right. them to a uh, custom button a or a custom, custom mode on the dial um we'll see we'll see what uh how it works yeah because you know Ed, who knows maybe to you know we'll we'll try it uh pen has got the custom Right, you know, spin. So I don't, yeah. I don't know. My thought is that um, between the uh, the EM1, the uh, EM5 Mark II, uh, all the previous pens, like I think mm -hmm. all those cameras, you could probably share between all those. So um, yeah, uh, someone's asking about the chance to test out the eye detect focus. No, I generally am a center point, uh, mm -hmm. small center point focus and recompose person. Um, Although I have done video with the face detect on to uh, shoot some video of myself talking <laughs> and uh, it worked pretty good. You know, if I'd move out of frame and, and I'll tell you what, so this is funny uh, on a side note, still on topic. <laughs> I had the camera set up behind me on a tripod and I was turned around facing back that way with my computer behind me. And I was talking about some of the uh, experiences with the camera and my screensaver pops up. And uh, because the EM, one Mark II has the articulating screen. I have the camera set up like this so I can see myself mm -hmm. in the display so I know what's going on. And uh, so the screensaver pops up and I'm like, oh, you know, whatever, that's fine. Um, until I notice that family photos start popping up and the camera's like, uh, you know, if I, I lean over like this and I'm talking, found faces. <laughs> it, it, see, it sees a face over here and I'm like, well, hold on, hold on. Let me get myself right back in front of the camera and get, get my face in the shot there. You know, I mean, if I'm sitting like this and a face pops up over here, it didn't do it because I was like, there must be more contrast with me. But when I leaned mm -hmm. back like this for a second and just was oh. looking at the shot, it grabbed the face on the computer. I was like, oh. <laughs> so it definitely recognizes a face. Kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, but uh, so that answers all the questions we've had up so far. And I'm going to kind of stop with the questions. We had a lot of them. Um, yeah, that's good. That's good. And just maybe... Um, it's eight thirty already. We've been I know it is. For half hour. I, did, I know I it is. Run off at the mouth forever. <laughs> um, so, uh, so I guess I really don't know what else to say that I didn't cover in the video. So, somebody wants to know how it focuses in low light. Um, killer, really good. I, to be honest with you, I never had a huge problem with the cameras in the past in low light. But like up at the campground where we're camping around the campfire, I had never missed focus ever. So, um, and that's what shooting with all of the lenses. Uh, even the new, mm -hmm. the 25 1.2 um, and all the current line of lenses. I never had issues with focus. Um, cool. And somebody's asking about rolling shutter. I haven't done a whole lot with rolling shutter, but I've seen examples shot with rolling shutter of a train that was moving at approximately about 70 kilometers an hour. Um, and you didn't see any weird distortion or bowing due to uh, rolling shutter. And that was with the electronic shutter. So, mm -hmm. um, right. Do you have any pictures to share, Mike? Or are you on the iPad? Um, I, I, yeah, I'm on my iPad. I, the only thing I talk about, I can talk real quick about the, the Super Nimble Street Kit. Ah, yeah, thing. do that. Yeah. And, and that'll give you a chance, then you can do some sharing, and then we can uh, call it a night. 
or whatever. But so, yeah, this last weekend I had an opportunity, which I would show you the pictures to talk about this, but uh, to get on the USS Detroit, the, a ship that's you know, a Navy ship that's being was commissioned here last week. Um, it was a, an amazing uh, experience to be able to get onto that ship live. And, um, and in fact, I'm going to, I am going to screen share a shot from my iPhone. <laughs> Just, can you see the boat there? Can you see the ship? Oh yeah. A little bit. All right. So go on Facebook and find that shot. There you go. But, uh, but I needed to be extremely small when I went on that ship. So I went for a whole new uh, deal and I have this peak design pouch that uh, came with the, uh, I came with, but it came out at the same time as the messenger bag that, that you're carrying. And this pouch inside, it's got a couple, um, a couple little of elastic pieces. But the cool thing is, is that, and it's hard to tell probably from here, but it's got the strips all the way up. So no matter how big or heavy it oh, gets, yeah. you can fold it over. Yep. And here's what I did. And I've got the capture clip. It's got a part there for your peak design capture clip to hang on the outside. So I took the pen F. Okay. Obviously this pen F right now doesn't have a lens on it, but it had the 17. So I've got the 17 on, on there. And then on with this combination, I've got the 12 millimeter prime and then the, the fisheye body cap. Uh, yeah. th this is on that Optech thing to hold two lenses. So you put that, you drop that in there, two batteries, cards, you know, cloth, the whole thing and you're you're walking on with this and, and there's actually a strap from peak design i know jamie knows about these straps yep. and they're all in those those clips so Sweet. all this is interchangeable if i just want to put this aside and one extra thing and i didn't bring it down here is on the back there's these things you could hook this to your belt if you wanted mm. um but i was able to get my small little mini tripod my tabletop tripod yeah to fit right in the back here Ah, cool. So I actually had a kit with a tripod. So I said, you know what, this is going to be, uh, you know, we get into New York. I know Jamie and I are going to get a chance to get in the streets and shoot a little bit. But uh, let me tell you, I went out, actually, I had one more lens too, uh, with four lenses, you know, the pen F and a place to strap it on if I needed to, you know, get my hands free real quick. Um, and uh, that thing is amazing. I, I, I never think... I really never was going to try it, but at the last second I had to because the, there were so many um, regulations to get onto the ship with cameras. You know, they needed the size of the bag proper and everything through uh, to get through the security. So it, it was a great, uh, great way to find this out. And I'm sure I'll write something up about it sometime too with all the pieces. We'll put the links in the, in the show notes uh, of those couple items, but if you want to get, you know, down and dirty and nimble, yeah <laughs> and you want to move especially in a place like new york city when there isn't a lot of room to move uh big bags are not going to work for you so so yeah definitely look into that a lot of a lot of fun a lot of fun so so let's see some pictures since i know you can share <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it's uh it's funny you got me really thinking what i need to pack for new york now as far I know. as going light it's like ah oh, crap now I need no. like a really small bag. I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna bring. Damn it, another bag. <laughs> three, three bags. <laughs> yeah, no, it's ridiculous. Big bag, oh, medium smokes. bag. Yeah. So, um, I don't know. I just have a couple images to share over stuff I shot over the last couple of weeks. Um, you know, starting with this one, I I miss doing black and white. It's been like too long for me. It seems like. And when I went out the other week to shoot, and I was shooting with the uh, the EM1 Mark II, and this is not with the EM1 Mark II. Um. <laughs> sadly <laughs> but uh i don't have an ir converted camera and for those who are kind of interested in in what an ir conversion would look like you can always go out and get just a cheap filter and this is like a cheap hoya filter for like 20 bucks or something um and i just threw that on and what i like to do though when i put those on like a lot of people shoot and then you get like this funky crazy red you know image out of the camera and then you got to go home and you got to <laughs> process it what i found is um I really like to just put it on the camera and then jump into mono mode and just this is yep. straight out of the camera. There's no I didn't touch anything on this. I just straight off the camera as a JPEG and shared it. Um and something else too uh is that this is a, a high res mode shot. <laughs> Which and I don't know how this works this way. And I don't know like it's you know it had to be a longer exposure because an IR filter is super dark. 
And right. I don't know if, for whatever reason, I don't see any weird artifacting in this. Yeah, that's odd, isn't it? And I don't know how that worked, and I don't know why that worked. So I've got some <laughs> some more questions to ask in New York City. Like, how did I do this? I'm gonna ask. <laughs> I'm gonna ask somebody how I made a photo <laughs> when I'm the one that made it. But um, yeah, it just worked out really good. Um, let's see the next shot. Uh, and another thing I miss doing that I haven't done a lot of, and that's just kind of exploring abandoned places. And uh, this is just a house that's kind of on my regular commute, you know, and I watch it all year long and it, it has a different personality every, you know, season. So as we're getting into the fall season here and the colors are changing, I just noticed that there were some vines on it that, that just turned this crazy red and all the other vines were turning like yellow and green. So I just had to stop and shoot it. Um, and this is the pen F like, I think, Everything on here, I think that I'm sharing is almost as pen F. Um, well, no, wait, maybe not. I guess uh, two of them are. So oh, I'm clicking on the wrong window. Uh, the next image was shot doing our fall colors. And um, this for me just kind of showcases Michigan and fall. Everybody wants to capture like these big, giant, sweeping vistas of color, which my next shot will be. But um, my wife and I stopped near uh, Frankfurt, Michigan, on our way to a lighthouse that I wanted to go visit. And the water is just this incredible aquamarine, and it transitions into this dark blue. But there was a poplar tree that, um, or a birch tree, I don't know what it was. Um, they had these bright yellow, you know, fading leaves on it. I just thought it made a cool contrast against against that color. And that was um, EM5 Mark II. Seems to be like my go-to camera lately anymore. Uh, if I'm not shooting with the pen F and the next shot, um, this is with the EM five Mark two cool. and the 300 millimeter F four with the teleconverter on it. <laughs> and um, so this church is like really freaking far away, like miles, literally miles away. And um, it's funny. I shared it online and I got a lot of like positive, you know, feedback on it. And it's funny cause I almost didn't share it. Cause I personally was a little not happy with it for the reason that um because it was so far away, you get um, you get the distortion from the heat rising, and you, it gets kind of blurry. So that's why the the church isn't like razor sharp. Um, so I guess you know, I guess I was trying to be overly technical. I guess from a uh, from a pretty fall photo standpoint, I guess it's pretty cool. <laughs> but again, this was near Frankfort, Michigan. Uh, and then one more shot. I told some people when I was doing a live broadcast that I was shooting Highland cows and. Everybody wanted to see them. I shot them with both the uh, EM1 Mark II, and this is with the, the EM5 Mark II. Uh, and this is a uh, 300 millimeter F4. No teleconverter on this one, though, just at 300 millimeters. Wow. What can I, what can I say? I like cows. They're kind of cool. <laughs> so that's kind of what uh, what I've been shooting over the past couple that's of That's a mean-looking cow. Dude, they're so nice, I think. <laughs> I think they're nice. I don't know. They were coming up to the fence. You know, I guess really close-up shots with the EM1 Mark II that I'll share really? when I'm allowed to, but um, yeah, I hope they're nice. Cause damn, I was getting them right up close to the fence. <laughs> trying, I wanted them to get close enough to where it made sense to use the eight millimeter fish eye, but I couldn't get them quite that close. Right. Right. So yeah, that's about it. I mean, that's all I've got to share. Um, and you know, I guess, you know, just like we've been saying for the last couple of weeks, if you guys have questions for us to take um, to Olympus headquarters next week, uh, shoot them our way, you know, do it through, email either mike or i both our yeah. websites have a contact us page um twitter uh, you know how to find us on message us on facebook you yeah, got it whatever whatever way you can let us yeah. know because uh those are great that's that's probably besides maybe getting to touch the uh em1 mark ii that's probably my favorite part is to talk about all the stuff with the engineers yeah. <laughs> without a doubt it sure is you know and they i think that they're kind of getting to where they they look forward to the feedback <laughs> that we bring, so you know, too. just because, you know, so many yeah. people reach out. Yeah. Uh, yeah so I guess, hey, look, a lot of those guys are geeks too. <laughs> they, oh yeah. And they completely. love this stuff, man. Oh yeah. I think, um, I so like the last couple of years, some of the questions that get brought up there, you know, that are brought, uh, to their attention via us. It's, it's fun to watch the eyebrows raise and you know, like, mm -hmm. wow that's that's great you know i like that idea you know and then they, the pencils get the whipping and they're writing stuff mm -hmm. down so very cool uh next episode mike is gonna be yeah full of new york we, stuff i'm guessing I'm, I'm thinking there'll be some mentioning of the new york trip somewhere along yeah. the lines 
There's uh, there's always the possibility that Mike and I will be doing some live broadcasting while we're uh, yeah that's right while we we're away about that yeah and it won't be on the YouTube channel so you need to go like the Facebook page and you can yeah. turn on uh, the notification setting so you get notified when we're broadcasting live because yeah for uh, mirrorless minutes yeah, yeah for the mirror yeah for the mirrorless minutes Facebook page yeah. um I'm sure we'll each individually do some you know for our own pages periodically but I'm gonna try and do as much as I can through the mirrorless minutes, Facebook page. So uh, yeah, keep yeah. an eye on that. And, oh, and uh, don't forget, we have a new group out on Facebook. Oh God. The, yeah. I'm glad you mentioned the Mark that. two. Yeah. Uh, OMD, the new Mark two. Let's just say that this is a more official page. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, there are other groups. We understand yeah. that, but yep. we have a feeling this may be the more official yeah. page. If, if you're uh, looking for a page that ends up with news, that's confirmed and, True. I'm not gonna say true. I'm not saying other pages won't have true news or whatever. But yeah, because because we have connections, mm -hmm. <laughs> there's a good chance that what we put on the page might be a little more legitimate and accurate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So join it. It's free. Yeah, do it. So you know what? <laughs> I'll actually put a link in the show notes below. Here, okay. Yeah. As well as link to the uh, the products that Mike was showing as well. Damn it! Yeah. He's gonna make me get another bag. My wife's gonna <laughs> love that. Yeah, I uh, bet. <laughs> so I guess we'll um. Bob Panic wants to know, do we have an official price? You should have tuned in a little bit earlier, Bob. Yeah, um, Bob, it was revealed. No, sorry. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Everybody knows, but Bob. No, actually, we don't know yet. Um, we probably yeah. won't for at least another couple of weeks. I don't know. I don't know how long it'll be before we know. Um, so thanks again for everybody that watched, tuned in yeah. live, had questions, lots of good questions tonight. I like that. I like this format now. I was hating on Google before, and now I'm liking it. <laughs> um, so we see you guys in a couple of weeks and again, head over to the Facebook page for mirrorless minutes, like yep. the page and turn on notifications so that you know, when we are broadcasting live from New York yep. city, all That's right, Saturday, see night. you guys later, take it easy. <laughs>